11th lesson of the series on mathematics of quantum mechanics and in this video today we would be learning a little bit about the operations of matrix uh, matrix addition scalar multiplication and i am going to show you a lot of examples which will make the mathematics quite easy my name is shonak and you are watching this video on my channel physics for students a warm welcome to this 10th lesson on mathematics of quantum mechanics so let us have a quick glance on what are the topics that we are covering today we will look into matrix addition scalar multiplication then uh, we will look into matrix multiplication what is matrices as function and vectors now this is something really important and i would like to reflect on this matrices as functions and vectors and the non commutativity property of matrix multiplication so uh, having laid upon the uh, you know the topics let us go ahead with the video so the first would be matrix addition and scalar multiplication now uh, similar to the vector addition it adding two matrices as long as both matrices have the same dimensions consist adding each corresponding matrix element we can see this adding adding matrices as long as both matrices have the same dimension consist of corresponding matrix with each uh, one another uh, similarly scalar multiplication as we will see so first let us look into this so given to, uh, the matrices m and n and if we get a scalar we can define is as this m plus n sub i j equals to obviously the i th and j th component of a m uh, added with the i th and j th component of n followed by c m i j equal to c m i j so that is how we follow and the example is something like this we get the matrix and then we add uh, this as 3 plus 2 3 minus 1 and then we further get into this i would just like to show with arrows how it really operates so this gets into this 3 minus 1 2 and then we operate the i part and it comes into this and this goes into this and finally we get the result is this so what we are doing is that if you follow general application that is adding the m plus n we are adding the component by component of each uh, matrices i and j of m then with n and so on and we are getting the result so same follows with the scalar multiplication part so if we get this one you can get this right so i've just skipped the <laughs> you know each by each so this is just 2 into 3 uh, then 6 and 6 and minus 2 plus 4 right so i just multiplied it with 2 okay and uh, this is a generic rule which i have taken from a website so if a equals to a1111 and it goes and like uh, to this then m multiplied by n and so this follows with k also and it uh, looks into this so this is more or less a very basic idea and the examples which will make things clear that how matrix addition actually and multiplication takes place okay now if you are following my series on this particular uh, mathematics of quantum mechanics where we have started with the uh, matrix operations you have discussed that vector multiplication was not very well defined now the question is that how about matrix multiplication it turns out that we can define a way to multiply matrices that is very suitable so it though sound a little bit arbitrary at first but we will see that through some examples we won't necessarily try try to explain that the definition comes from but we will justify that what it really makes the sense so we will first start by giving a kind of a rigorous definition of matrix uh, multiplication so you look at this and you can try to make some sense so what happens is that given two matrices m and n as long as the number of columns is the same that is very important because the columns have to be the same is the same the number of rows in of uh, in n we can define uh, a multiplication of operation in matrices so let us assume that the number of columns in m and in the number of columns in n are i and j then the i and j components of m and n is given by this and this can be written further as this so i've just used a kind of a very simple sigma uh, uh, notation to use this so it goes from i ones to n and then it goes m uh, of i k and it generalizes into j so this can be written as something like this i1 and then 1j and then i2 and then 2j and so on now uh, what happens is that uh, this is a kind of a very important observation that uh, suppose m and n uh, m is an m uh, m times n matrix and n is an n and n times l matrix 
uh, that is i only goes from m to k uh, i would say 1 to m and uh, k goes from 1 to n and j goes from 1 to l then for the definition of m and n m will give you a m times l matrix so this is a kind of a quick observation that if uh, uh, i goes from 1 to m and uh, 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 k goes from 1 to n and j goes from 1 to l then the definition nm will give a m and l matrix so although the definition of matrix multiplication can be a little bit i would say a little bit confusing a little bit abstract uh, let us try to explain it in terms of an example so let us see this is m which has got a kind of an a b c d e f and n which is a 2 by 3 matrix and we have got n which is this which is called a 3 by 2 matrix then we expect the results of the multiplication to be a 2 by 2 matrix that is this one so uh, this is something like this so we get a 2 by 2 matrix i have shown so first what we do is find the element of mn 1 1 the elements resulting in the following way so we get this and then we take this part and then let stick to this part and we get ag plus bj plus cl quite simple now next what we do is that we take the same one and then we try it. So what we have done is that we have added the indices m11 plus n11 plus m12 plus n21, m13 plus 31, and we got the value. Similarly, we will go ahead and find out the m and 1, 2 elements. So we will go ahead with a, b, c, the same one. We will take this part and then the second part. So what we are going first, we are taking a, b, c, we are computed with g, j, l, and now we are computing with h, k, q, and the result is this. A H plus B Q so plus C K, and then we will go again with this part D E F, and uh, first we will do with this element, and then we get this result D J uh, D G plus E J plus F L, and then further we turn the page, and then we go with this part and the last part, and we get this one. Uh, so this is how it happens, right? So what we got is that we we can see a further example, and this results into this and this. So I've just uh, you know give a quick example how the matrix multiplication. So you see we multiply two with zero plus three with zero plus i with three, right? And then we further go with two with one. So this i is basically an imaginary. I've given this example because I want to make you really feel that the imaginary numbers do come on quantum mechanics, and that is how we do. Now there are certain more observation. The first, and this is something really interesting that. Matrices can come as functions or vectors. Now, what do I mean by that? Let us see in this part of the video. So, since a vector is also a matrix that has only one, I would say only one column, then we can think of matrices as functions or vectors. For example, if we get something like this, V equals 2, 1, uh, this is a 2 by 1 matrix, right? Uh, it has, and uh, we get P, this one, and this has got a 3 by 2 matrix, then what we get is that m uh, n matrix maps n dimensional vector to a m dimensional vector right so we can write it in this way we can take p i have or dropped an arrow on b so that you can understand that this is a vector and from here we go into this right you can just check the calculation it's quite simple and we get into this now this one the result 3 1 plus 4 4 i and minus 9 plus i this is a 3 by 1 matrix as expected Right, so this is a 2 by 1 multiplied by 3 by 2 gets a 3 by 1 matrix. But this is something important. Remember that if we take this one, which is a 3 by 1 matrix, this is not like a function on real numbers, right? Something like this, fx equals to xq plus 4. So what it does, I will just explain to you. It is a scalar function, for example, f. It will take a number, n, for example, as an input and gives an output as n. So a scalar function f takes a number n as an input and gives you a number as an output. And a m times n or mn matrix, this would work exactly like a scalar function, but it would take a n-dimensional uh, vector as an input and would give a m-dimensional vector as an output. And remember that it is a function on n-dimensional vector space to an m-dimensional vector space. So this is something I would say a nice observation that it is not like a function on real numbers. It would take a value, I would take a number and it would a number and it would take an n-dimensional vector and it would take uh, give an output of an m-dimensional vector 
both are occurring on an n dimensional vector space and m dimensional vector space okay i would like to show an example over here if we take v equals to 3 2 and m equals to this then the matrix m we should mention this acts something like this right so the question is that uh, this is how it does mv equals to 3 2 and this one gives also 3 2 and then so you see this one and this one this is 3 minus 2 and v is 3 plus 2 i mean to say positive 2 so what we can say that it acts as a deflection on and one another because the signs are reversed right 3 minus 2 and 3 2 now when we are talking of reflection the question is that can we visualize this on a cartesian plane that is what i would like to show in the next part of the video so when the matrix m acts on this this acts comes as a reflection and here is a nice schematic diagram the arrow points towards this and this this is v32 and you see this is the negative direction so v would be 3 minus 2 so the matrix m defined as defined in the previous example acting on a vector on the cartesian plane performs as a kind of a reflection about the x axis okay now coming up another so yeah so this is the matrix m acting on a vector on the cartesian plane now there is another important observation i won't say observation i would say this is a very important property uh, so the, we take this one yeah so matrix n acting uh, this is another example so you see this yeah so matrix n performs a reflection about the y axis on the cartesian plane okay so uh, uh, this means that when we are taking the earlier example that is uh, m equals to minus 1 0 uh, this one and now it is acting on another which is n v which is v1 and v2 then it comes again you see minus v1 and v2 right so if you, uh, let me go back and i think it will be uh, clear yeah so you here you see this is 3 minus 2 and when i turn the page and go into this this is minus v1 so in this case also the matrix n performs as a reflection about the y axis on the cartesian plane and this can also be shown okay so this is something which is a very important property now you see that matrix uh, this is uh, so what we call as non commutativity of matrix multiplication so you see m is a 2 by 2 matrix and n is a 3 by 1 matrix so you cannot perform the multiplication that means the order should be the same so 2 by 2 matrix cannot be multiplied by 3 by 1 matrix that is why i've shown it as a big cross and you cannot perform the multiplication okay now we come last to the property which is very important which is called a non commutativity property of matrix multiplication now in general in mathematics what do we mean by commutativity so uh, the commutativity in mathematics is an operation where the orders are irrelevant that means whatever way you multiply it, it it doesn't make any sense it is all the same so for example if a and b are scalar numbers then a plus b equals to b plus a right and a b equals to b a now the question is that matrix addition and matrix scalar multiplication are commutative to operations but when about when it comes to matrix uh, multiplication there is some an exception so uh, you have to remember that uh, the question about commutativity only comes for square matrices that means matrix addition and matrix scalar multiplication are commutative in operations but not with matrix multiplication so let us see a quick example things will become clear so here is a matrix m which is one and what i am doing is that i am multiplying in two different orders so first i am doing this i get i just keep the states i think this is pretty simple you can do it yourself so it would be 8 and 5 and uh, 8 and 14 and 5 and 10 which is the first order it comes then further when i take into this one i get something like this so obviously this is 13 and 5 and uh, 13 and 5 and 9 and 5 which is not the same as uh, 8 and 14 and 5 and 10 right so that shows that m and n is not equal to n and m that means it doesn't follow the commutativity property so this is a kind of a we take a pause so that's that's all for today's video so what we will do in the next video is that we will be talking more about composite of functions linearity complex conjugate transpose and conjugate transpose so we will continue with this uh, series in the next video and these are the topics so do let me know how do you like the video by putting up a comment 
please do subscribe to my channel physics for students click on the bell icon and click on all to get all the notification from physics for students i hope you like this video and we are continuing with the series of mathematics and quantum mechanics and i will be soon back with some more interesting video till then goodbye Thank and you stay for safe in this video we appreciate your time and patience if you want to connect with us and provide further feedback comment or suggestions please email us at contact.physicsforstudents@gmail.com you can also follow us on facebook instagram and linkedin see you soon in the next video